Thank you very much for the invitation and uh, for inviting me to present the assessment of recruitability at the bedside, in, uh, especially in patients with ARDS. So um, my uh, laboratory has been working with a number of companies listed here to get research grants or equipment. And uh, I start by uh, reminding the fact that uh, the degree of lung recruitability can vary a lot uh, between patients having all the meeting the criteria for ARDS definition. And this is an example uh, from a famous study from uh, Luciano Gattinoni, um, where on the left you have a patient with a CT scan at five, then at 45 centimeters of water, which is a, a one of the definition which has been used for recruitment. And when you look at the densities of dawn of the lung, which are not aerated, they do not change from five to 45. By contrast, and it's interesting to see when you look at the size of the heart, it's completely squeezed at 45 centimeters of water because the lung is hyper distended. On the right, you have a patient who is a recruiter. So when you go from five to 45, you reopen part of the lung, which were not aerated at five. Of course, in clinical practice, what you would really like to know is, can you keep this lung open? But this is just to show that in some patients, even if you increase the pressure, of course you will increase lung volume, but just by distending the lung. In other patients, increasing the pressure will potentially be of benefit because it will reopen zones which were not aerated. So uh, the difficulty is that at the bedside, you cannot do this type of CT scan measurements. It's not practical and even risky so, and, and complicated. So we need bedside techniques. Um, and we don't, we didn't have bedside technique available until very recently. Uh, one of them, which is interesting, is the electrical impedance tomography. And this is a, an illustration. I think one of the key feature of the EIT is that it gives you the distribution of ventilation. And therefore, you can look at the lung. It's like a CT slice image. Uh, comparing the dependent and the non-dependent part, which you know is, is a key issue in the distribution of, uh, of the aeration in uh, ARDS. And you see the slice number A, uh, most of the ventilation goes in the non-dependent part because the dependent part is collapsed. And the figure B, indicates what happens after increasing PEEP. And you see ventilation now goes much more in the dependent part. In fact, it went from 19% to 44%. But at day two, keeping the same PEEP level, what we observed in these patients was that uh, now most of the ventilation was going into the dependent part, which does not make sense. So the only explanation we had was that the non-dependent part now was hyper distended. And we took that as an incentive to immediately decrease PEEP. There was no other indication. And you see that decreasing PEEP, I think by half, something like that, we, we went back to 50% of distribution of ventilation. So that's an interesting tool, which gives you an idea of uh, recruitment and distension. And just to take a recent example from uh, the COVID pandemic, uh, this is an example of one way to use it. Uh, you do a decremental PEEP trial from a high PEEP uh, here, like 30 going back down to, uh, to eight here. And you can calculate based on the initial image at the highest PEEP, uh, the relative change in uh, regional peak cells which indicate the amount of, uh, 
of collapse when the pixels have a decrease in compliance and also of distension when the pixel improve their compliance when you decrease speed. And based on that, you can you can decide that's a bit arbitrary where you want to place your PIP. In this study, for instance, they wanted the minimal collapse. So they uh, selected a relatively high level of PIP, which were even higher than the high PIP FIO2 table. So I'm not saying this is a good way to do it, but just to illustrate this is a technique which can help us to understand recruitment uh, at the bedside. We have recently designed a technique which can be used on any ventilator with some uh, precautions, but which is really simple and uh, can help you a lot in deciding whether your patient is recruitable or not recruitable. So we call that the recruitment to inflation ratio, and I'm going to demonstrate how it works. Uh, so the principle is based on the what we have described before, which is the hysteresis behavior of the lung. So when you do multiple PV curves and the, when the lung is recruitable, you see that for the same pressure in the system, you have more volume, which is exactly what we have in mind when we say we want to recruit, uh, right? We want to go back to the same pressure and having more volume in the system. Uh, and you can think of the lung as having three compartments. One is the baby lung. So this is the lung which stay open at low PIP. Uh, the recruitable lung, so the one you want to reopen with higher PIP. And the part of the lung which is not recruitable. And for instance, if you look at the CT scan from Gatinoni, the green part would be the, the baby lung, the part which was open at low PIP. The yellow part would be the recruitable lung right, which can open at high pressure. And the red part would be the non-recruitable lung. And what we do is one single maneuver. We first decrease the respiratory rate to be sure there is no autopip because it makes calculations more difficult. And then in one breath, we drop the PIP from 15 to five. So this is a drop of 10 centimeters of water. And we, simply read on the ventilator the amount of exhaled volume. So we subtract the initial volume and we compare the this volume to what was predicted by the compliance at low PIP. Remember, the compliance at low PIP tells you how much volume you will get for a given amount of pressure. And if you only distend the baby lung, well, you will not recruit anything. So the volume measured will be exactly the one predicted by the compliance at low P. Maybe I can show you uh, just in one minute a video. For this calculator, you need you to use the set title volume website, and you need to observe exhaled volume during the maneuver as well as plateau pressure, it. which can okay, be measured in real time by using a short inspiratory pause, like 0 0.2 seconds. Do is uh, so you have a small pose to measure the plateau pressure, is to decrease the respiratory rate. Reduce the respiratory rate to eight breaths per minute to ensure eight. there is no auto peep. So with that, you, you are sure with long expiration, there is no auto peep, which makes the, uh, the calculation easier to interpret. Prepare for a peep drop of 10 and centimeters of water. In this example, we're going from 15 from down to five. five. Okay. At the end of this breath, observe okay. the exhale tidal volume, 398, and, you are and then keep for watching the for the exhaled release volume, of which is 818. Here it's 818. Also, look at the plateau then pressure now and enter the all of these values into the calculator so as instructed. The compliance of the baby lung, Return back to your previous settings. And you go settings. back immediately to your preceding settings. Okay, so it's done in, in less than one minute. That's really a very simple technique. And these techniques will tell you what the recruited volume, remember the difference with the predicted volume, you know the delta PIP. So this gives you what we call the compliance of the recruitable lung. And we do the ratio of this compliance to the compliance of the baby lung. And the higher this ratio, the higher is the lung recruitability. So, Again, I'm not going into the details of how we validated this index, but just to say it's it's feasible anywhere. 
uh, during the, the, the early days of the pandemic in uh, China, in Wuhan, uh, we had colleagues who were work, working there and we recommended to measure the recruitment to inflation ratio. And these are the individual values of their patients. Uh, this ratio can go from zero, which means there is no recruitability of the lung, to values up to two or 2.5, meaning the lung is highly recruitable. And for now, we use a threshold of 0.5 to say below that the lung is not recruitable. Do not try to increase PEEP. Above that, we say the lung is recruitable. Try to maximize the, 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 the recruitment by increasing PEEP. And they found patients who are not recruitable, you know, the, the very low ratio. Interestingly, uh, they also had patients who were, went to prone positioning. And uh, very often after the prone positioning, like here, the recruitment to inflation ratio increased, suggesting that the prone uh, did not only offer immediate benefit and maybe lung protection, but also increased recruitability. And just to uh, maybe go back to COVID again, we did a study uh, comparing uh, matching patients with COVID to patients with ARDS but non-COVID and uh, trying to have a match between the same level of hypoxemia, the same age, the same severity, etc. So this is a study we did with uh, Domenico Grieco in Rome and the, uh, the main results are shown on this slide. You, you compare the COVID patient, the non-COVID patients uh, you see on average, maybe the compliance is slightly higher in COVID patients as uh, uh, discussed very early uh, by the group of Gattinoni. Uh, there is no difference in, in minute ventilation or standardized minute ventilation. And there was no difference in recruitment to inflation ratio, which means the recruitability on average was similar in COVID and non-COVID patients. But the important point here is to look at the distribution of values of recruitment to inflation ratio. Some patients were clearly non-recruitable, so it would be risky to uh, use high PEEP in these patients. Some patients were substantially recruitable. Some patients were extremely recruitable. So you cannot predict whether the patient is going to be recruitable or not, you, you need to measure it and you need to individualize the PEEP titration. Uh, uh, again, if you see no recruitability, use the lowest possible PEEP. If you see the patient is recruitable, try to increase PEEP up to 12, maybe up to 15, see how it is tolerated. Uh, but you will know that it's worth doing it because you have you have a response in terms of recruitment. So I'll stop there. Uh, thank you and recommend uh, that you visit our blog, coemv.ca for Center of Excellence in Mechanical Ventilation, where we discuss all these questions, we give details, and you can also access to our video and also the calculators to help you uh, doing this measurement at the same, uh, at the bedside. Thank you very much.